Hello everyone and welcome back to Reentry, where I'm going to continue the Gemini Academy, the Gemini tutorials. And we have done up to computer and I'm starting life support, the environmental control system. So here we go. Okay, it's uh, brighter today and I even have the flashlight on. Why do I have the flashlight on when I don't need it and don't have it on when I do? <laughs> um, anyway. The ECS is the system that keeps the cabin pressurized, maintains temperature, removes odors and CO2, provides oxygen and water, those odors, very important for that 14 day mission. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, it tries to uh, create an Earth-like environment in the capsule like a small planet. Well, slightly lesser atmosphere, but okay. The system is semi-automatic, but provides manual control when needed. Two coolant loops will push coolant through the equipment. This is a liquid that will absorb or transfer heat, reducing the temperature of the components it goes through. A radiator and evaporator and heat exchangers are used to cool the fluid down as it goes through the loop. It is also used to heat the oxygen flow. The fluid will go through a radiator that will radiate well, as it says, uh, the heat to space and cool the liquid. Keep in mind that if the radiator is warm, like after ascent, it will heat the liquid instead. In this case, the radiator should be bypassed. A uh, radiator bypass switch controls this. Set it to flow. So we will do radiator flow bypass. Uh, set it to flow. Okay. There are four pumps that will pump the coolant through the loops. These are usually on until retrograde. The coolant loops and pumps are located in the adapter and will be removed at adapter separation. You can enable the loops by setting the pumps to on. So, on, on. Uh, there are two loops, one primary and one secondary. Uh, I don't know if I... Uh, I just want to pump A on. Um, let's go to the center pedestal or panel and pump A on the secondary will probably be what they asked for or maybe not. Okay. Uh, the oxygen used in the capsule is the same as the cryogenic oxygen used in the fuel cells. It is heated before entering the oxygen loops. The primary oxygen tank is in the adapter and the secondary is in the capsule for re-entry. The suit fans are controlled using the suit fan switch. It is it is usually set to numbers 1 and 2 for the entire mission, set to numbers 1 and 2, like that now. The pull levers in on the front roof panel are used to control some important ECS functions. The cabin recirc, that's the one on the left, uh, is used to permit air to enter the suit circuit for removal of odors and CO2. If CO2 is high, pull this lever and leave it open until the indicators show a good value, then close it. The snorkel is used to permit air during descent. The cabin vent, that's the center one, is used for decompressing the cabin and ventilation during landing. The water seal, next one over, seals the cabin for water at splashdown. And the last one, the CO2 high rate recock Restores the oxygen high flow rate to normal oxygen flow and restores the capability to do another high oxygen flow. The high flow is initiated with the O2 high rate switch just below it. So, that's on. that has a guard on it. I guess these big rings don't need guards, uh, I guess because they only go down and you're more likely to knock them up. There are many gauges you can use to check the ECS. The temp gauge shows the cabin and suit temperatures. Yes, it's been my bane. <laughs> it always shows the temperatures to be insanely high. In fact, exactly as they are now. Okay. The press cabin shows the cabin pressure and pressure CO2 shows the amount of CO2. So that's what we have there. Sec ox uh, shows the number of oxygen in the secondary oxygen supply used for entry, re-entry or emergencies. The cryo gauge is used to monitor cryogenic systems on board, the hydrogen and oxygen. It is important to frequently monitor the ECS systems, make it part of your routine. Okay. 
So exit session. And next. So make sure it mark me complete. Sequencer. In this lesson, we will take a look at the basics of the sequencer and learn about retrograde and landing stages. We will perform these in the next lesson. Go there. This is the sequencer here, presumably. And um, yeah. The sequencer is used to control the major phases of the mission from ascent to landing. It has a main display on the center panel and is identified as long stack of light switches. Most of these can be opened and triggered. It works by illuminating a task you have to perform. If a light illuminates, you can open the cover and press the button to execute the step. This is a fully manual operation. After stage 2 separation, the sequencer is counting down to the time to retrograde time base. At TR minus 256, meaning 256 seconds before retrograde sequence start, the sequencer starts to prepare for retrograde. At this point, the sequencer will illuminate lights you need to follow from top to bottom. The first is the end retro at. By executing this action, uh, the platform will be tilted for correct retro attitude. Everybody likes the retro attitude, right? Anyway, uh, battery power is a reminder to turn on your batteries as you will separate the fuel cells. To avoid a power interruption, the battery should be online before separating the adapter. RCS will disable ohms, this cannot be reverted, and enables the RCS thruster system in the capsule. As with the ohm system, the RCS ring A and ring B, two systems for redundancy and efficiency, must have propulsion and power. Uh, these are set by the RCS control power and prop motor valves switches on the center panel. Prop motor valves and the control power switches. At TR minus 30, SEP ohms lines, SEP elect SEP adapter and arm auto retro is illuminated. SEP ohms lines will seal the ohms propulsion lines, SEP elect will cut the adapter electricity lines, and SEP adapt will separate the adapter along with all the equipment. Lastly, you need to arm the auto retro system. This also needs the retro squibs active. It will then fire the retros. It is normal to trigger the man fire retro one the man fire retro one second after the retro fire just to be sure. So that's the man fire retro there, the round one. Okay, when the retros have fired, uh, you need to jettison the retro section by pressing retro, uh, j jettison retro. The spacecraft will now be in entry configuration. Acme attitude control is set to rate command and then you will follow the attitude indicators on the FDI. FDAI. Uh, the computer is set to re-ent, keep in mind the 10 minute loading, and you are now on the way back to Earth. After re-entry, the landing system is used to deploy a drogue at 40,000 feet and the main chute at 10,600 feet. The altimeter can be used to check this, and lights will illuminate on the left panel when you do this. Keep in mind that the chute deployment is manual. I wonder why, I mean, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, but you haven't mentioned where to do the manual deployment, right? We've run out of buttons here. No, oh, right, it's down here. High out, drogue, para, landing attitude, and parachute jettison. At 200 feet, the landing out at is pressed to tilt the capsule before splashdown. And at splashdown, the para jet is triggered. This also happens, that, hop, that happens automatically. At this point, the re-entry will be complete. Okay, so that was, uh, it's a sequencer, but it's mostly about re-entry. That's mainly what the sequencer is about. Okay, the orbit and re-entry. Well, that we sort of covered it, but maybe this time we'll get to practice finally. Unlike the Mercury one, this has been mostly talking about things. Okay, good morning. I'm Hector. We have Hector now. So, um, in this lesson, I will teach you how to perform the deorbit reentry landing procedure for the Gemini spacecraft. Atmospheric entry or reentry is the movement of an object from outer space through the gases. Yes, okay. Um, uh, can cause atmospheric breakup. Yes, I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. 
Now just before re-entry, the Gemini capsule will jettison the retrograde section, leaving only the cone-shaped spacecraft holding the crew. The tip nose of the Gemini capsule contains the parachute system. Small explosives will deploy the parachutes to slow the capsule's descent. The capsule will shortly after make a big splash in the ocean and float until a rescue ship retrieves the vehicle and astronauts. Okay, we are 80 minutes from the start of re-entry, so okay, we get to practice. The first thing we will do in this lesson is take a look at the deorbit re-entry landing procedure. Uh, first, we need to set the Gemini spacecraft to retro attitude. Uh, okay, uh, hit V on your keyboard for opening view selector. Okay, set ohms to open. And... Roger. Now in the control power, uh, set it to on. Ohms are needed for performing the retro burn. Make sure that the attitude control is set to platform, and yes it is. Uh, this will hold the spacecraft's attitude to the platform selected. Then set platform to button forward. So, there we go. Okay, now the spacecraft should be changing its attitude to retrograde. Look at the FDA eyeball or just outside the window. <laughs> it's daylight, so we can look just outside the window. We see that the clouds are receding, so yes. But we should take a look at the ball just to make sure. Seems a bit off right now, but okay. Close enough, I suppose. Set the computer mode to pre-LN. And then press start on the computer. Pre-LN. PLN attitude computer oh, okay well thought that was like before we actually started and launched but okay we have pressed start let's check how much time uh, we have left to the retro burn let's go to pilot panel I personally prefer just using my mouse Press 1 on the MDIU and 9. 19. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, I did not want 8. Uh, clear. Okay. And then read out. Okay, 4, 5, 2, 1. Time for retro burn in seconds. One important tool during re entry is the event timer. Let's read out again. So, so it is ticking down. So let's start by using how to use it. Learning how to use it. Okay. Uh, we will set the event timer to a countdown for 30 minutes. Uh, DN mode. Counting down mode. Uh, turn the event timer dial clockwise. Uh, clockwise. Left. Oh, sorry. Counterclockwise. Left is the important thing. To increase numbers until getting to 30 minutes. Once 30 is displayed in the hours digit, surely minutes digit, right? Okay, um, let's... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Ah! Come on. Okay, 30. 30 minutes. Other positions to set seconds to zero. We gotta turn the left pin down to. Okay, stop. And to down. Yeah, we wanna count down, not up. Then set to start by pushing the event timer to standby. Well, do we wanna start it now? Because we got like a while. Well, whatever they say. Okay, it's counting down now. We will run the pre-retro checklist when this clock reaches zero. Alright, let us get familiar with the entry procedures while waiting. Open the checklists in the mission pad and find the entry section. Gosh, we haven't looked at the checklists much in this. I mean, the Mercury was much more common. Here, we haven't done much. 
These sections contain all the checklists we will be using today. Read through them and try to get an overview of the procedures. Time, It will be time well invested. Well, I'm going to rely on the fact that I've done this before, however distantly. Then time scale until the event timer reaches zero. Okay, I have dutifully done so, and Roger. Well, it's now counting more. But we'll leave it. The first part of the entry section is a pre-retro checklist. It's important that you correctly set up the event timer when instructed to do so, as the OBC Core 19 will be unavailable while the OBC loads. Run Well, do we have to redo the counter? Oh well, anyway. Okay, sequence, let me put that away. Run the check checklist now. I'll just go through it, I suppose. Okay, sequence light test, amber, red, and green. All right. Um, well, does it kind of tell me anything about that? You will need to monitor core 19 as you proceed with the checklist. Uh, one of the last steps will, will be to set the event timer when core 19 reaches 20 minutes. So let me just take a look at that. Read out. Okay, we've got five minutes. Sequence lights test. I don't. I don't know where to click. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean. I mean, we got sequence lights here. Test. All right. Um, lights test red. Okay, they are red. Amber. Fine. Amber. Okay. Good enough for me. Okay. Uh, circuit breaker is closed. Left panel. E yeah, I think the circuit breakers are. Okay. Square retro power arm. Okay. Set event timer to 20 minutes. Okay. Setting. Let me just stop it for now. Okay, it is set. Okay, overheads, panel CBs, all. Circuit breakers. Um, all those. Um, I think the circuit breakers are all there. The Acme logic is not a circuit breaker set. Okay. Uh, open the fuse water heaters, ohms heaters, center light as needed. I think it's fine. Suit fan. I thought they were skipped to one and two the whole time. Radio keying. Okay, that ways. Beacon, C band, continuous. Okay, top. Re entry. Okay, let's go to the pilot seat. Okay. BT, voltmeter selector. So, C. Okay. Right panel, circuit breakers closed. Except. Okay. Um, let's get the accepts. That one. Agena. Yeah, we don't need that right now. Okay. Well, let's check the core. Well, 247 seconds left. Wait, um, no, not 247 seconds left. 1047 seconds left, right? Okay, well, we're gonna time warp and just keep hitting readout. Okay, 14, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ah! So what happens if I'm a little bit late? <laughs> okay, uh, hopefully, okay, so this says 
Um, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40. How does that match with that? <laughs> okay, not very well. All right, let's just uh, let's just move on. Uh, commu uh, computer mode re-entry. All right. Okay, and then computer start. Oh, wait for it to load module, and then start. Okay, now what do I do? I shouldn't have started, huh? Ten minutes away from the planned ignition. I don't know. Uh, we might have messed up again. Did it say that the light should be on? I mean, usually and the light is on when it's busy, and it wasn't on, so that means it wasn't busy? Okay. 256 seconds to retro. One minute to retro and then post retro. It will be hectic. Yes, many squibs will be released. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, the next checklist, yeah, run feature. First thing it asks you to do is wait for the event timer to reach that. Checklist will verify critical switch in configurations. Proceed when at 4 minutes and 16 seconds. At the end of this checklist, it will ask you to perform 1 minute retro. This will be where all the sequencer buttons will be pressed. There will be a lot in short time, so be prepared. You will need to be placed close attention to sequencers. Sequencer lights will illuminate yellow, and that will be first. When a sequencer is pressed and it is complete, they will turn green. Anyways, back to the checklist. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I guess I should time warp. Okay. Well, I'm gonna check mark that. Alright, let's go over to the pilot seat, uh, pilot's panel. And we can start getting the batteries on again. We turn them off after launch. Uh, prop motor valves uh, open. Okay, prop selector. Let's go to the center pedestal. Uh, okay, RCSA. Radio record. Okay, Commander's Panel. Okay, re-entry rate command. Yeah? Re-ent. Looks that way. It doesn't automatically move on that. Okay, controller power ohms off. Uh, prop motor valve ohms closed. And now we activate the RCS. Okay, well... Um... I guess we do this even though it's not one minute yet, because this isn't the one minute checklist. Okay. Push. RCS. Push. Okay. Control spacecraft attitude to and hold. Um. Up, up. I guess we just line up with the intended markers. Um, it's actually a little bit finicky. Okay, I guess that's right. I'm surprised it doesn't do that on its own. Okay, pilot side. Um, data attitude. Start one minute retro checklist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess we check first. Uh, it's actually two minutes right now. Uh, we are nowhere near aligned. Can't the darn computer hold it? Gosh darn it. Can I just have it on like 
some other command. Okay, one minute. Retro attitude. I suppose I'm doing it. Okay, uh, no. I wish one of us could be doing the holding the thing <laughs> while the other of us is pushing the buttons. Okay, separate Ohm's line. Separate adapter. Okay. At TR minus 30 seconds. Close. Squib retro. Um, let's check that. Okay, minus five seconds. We're actually probably late anyway. Arm auto retro. Hopefully the retros will fire. Oh, there they are. And is it gonna hold it at all or not? I don't even know if we're in the right direction anymore. It seems like I'm manually piloting it. I feel like this is not right, but... Okay. Now it says maintain requested attitude while waiting for the event time and then follow the stuff precisely. Okay, we did that. Event timer direction up. Okay. Well, I already did the manual fire retro. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I didn't do the manual fire retro. I we fired retro. Um, we seem to be turning a lot right now. Stop that. Does it look like we were retro? Uh, close enough. Okay. We haven't just in retro yet. It keeps going out of line. Retro jet lit. It is lit. Okay, squib retro arm. And, well, get rid of it. Start post retro checklist. Do this now. Can we just not be floating around all over the place? I mean, button forward, re -end. Oh, maybe this was supposed to be... I mean, it should hold button forward then. It's definitely not holding button forward, I just want to point out. Okay, mission pad. I'll just let it float around for a while. Post retro jettison. Okay. Squibs. Hmm. FDAI mode 2. Set knob zero and why do I want the B off? But I guess oh well, let's back up one. Okay, so fuse we turn some fuses off. And over to the pilots panel. Ohms control propellant. Uh okay. Just turning off the fuel cells. I mean, we're not even connected to the fuel cells. Okay, squib landing. Arm. Okay, take note of retrofire the DV vector on the IVIs. Zero. Start entry checklist. Make sure computer is set to reent mode. It is. Yep, it is. Uh, press start to turn it on. Well, bright green light. Okay, start entry checklist. Will be proven. Change the Gemini spacecraft attitude manually. 
so that the needles will point center. Great. It's so Neolithic. Oh, 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 okay. Stop. Can we have a low rate? Yeah, well, I'm not using keyboard. I'm using joystick. Centered as much as you can. Once drag is detected, air density will automatically move the spacecraft into a stable position. Lift vectors point downwards. Okay, it's fine. Um, 100,000 feet altitude, roll the spacecraft heads down. So the lift vac vector points up. We'll show the range to touchdown point and we'll start the countdown. Roll the spacecraft into a heads up position, driving down into the atmosphere. The lift vector up, the longer the capsule will travel before splashing down. Try to maneuver so you get close to the splashdown point. This is too fancy. <laughs> I, I'll be satisfied if I survive, okay? Your spacecraft will shake as it gets struck by the atmosphere, burning depicted as a bright yellow light wrapping around the atmosphere. Maneuver to maintain g-forces below 10 and range. I can't even get the little yellow markers aligned particularly well right now. It'll take me all of my effort to do that. I don't even know how long we're going to be going for first. How long is this going to take? With it not even trying to hold... Not even an SAS sort of stability mode. Well, this is a heck of a wait. I hope I actually retroburned. <laughs> like some confirmation I'm actually coming back down and stuff. If I try time warping it's gonna get really badly out of whack and then we'll suddenly hit the atmosphere and uh, I won't be in the right position. Let me go altitude check. 69. Well it's going down so... Just wanted to check. Oh, we've crossed entry interface. Prepare for entry and atmospheric drag. Alright, let's try and get this lined up again. Well, I've been prepared for the G-forces. Come on! Well, I think it's holding retrograde on its own now. I mean, the atmosphere is probably pushing on it. No, okay, it's deviating a little bit in y'all. Maybe that was optimistic. Yeah, even in pitch it's uh, still not there. Oh, why did it go like that? Don't do that. Um, that... Okay, it, it, messed, it got messed up a little bit just there. I can't pull it to where it wants to go. I can't move it anymore. I think it's just going retrograde now. I thought it'd be a little bit off of directly retrograde just because it's like a lifting entry, right? Roll needle deflection. I don't even see the roll needle to be honest. Rate command re-enter? Well, that's what it said for 19 minutes, so... I'm still not getting any G-forces. Maybe a tiny bit there, I don't know. Well, we got a whole G of acceleration now. 
And we've got some flame effects out there. Yeah, I, I forget exactly how I'm supposed to read that aft light there. I'll, I'll roll it over though to try to control the g-forces if it operates the way I think it should. It said try to control it for 10 g's. I hope we don't get 10 g's. That's a lot. But right now we're just at 2. Well, it's brightening up, but it's still 2 G's. Okay, rumbling sound is happening, 3 G's. It's not really deflecting as far from the horizon as I would think for a lifting entry. If we get to 4G's, I'll roll over to mitigate the G-forces. But I swear it seems like it's already going down. Oh, and the altimeter started up. So I guess that's 100,000. Okay, no, it's going up now. Uh, well, I'll try and lift. I, mean, I just want to see how it goes. Once everything is calm again, it means you have performed the re-entry successfully. Well, I guess it's satisfied. Run the landing checklist and follow it during the descent. So we're below 3 G's and it's already asking me to do that, so okay. Landing checklist. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Run. Okay, when 40k illuminates. Uh, I, I think it's illuminated, right? Okay, yes. Okay, that Acme. High altitude drogue push. Okay, toggle D ring, uncover, and arm. Toggle D ring. And I, uh, they never told me about the D-ring, so I'm just gonna proceed. Closing the RCS when four, uh, when 10.6k illuminates, then we will go with the parachute button para. Have we deployed the drogue? Oh, yeah, we have. It's still got a little heart aperture. Anyway. <laughs> okay, we've deployed the drogue. Waiting for... 10,600. We're close. Okay. Uh, para. Ah, there we go. And there's the main chute. Okay. After the main chute deploy, we can set the landing attitude. Okay, fuse at all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> I gotta read that. Oh, shoot. Okay. Beacon. Acme bias power off. Where are you, Acme bias power? Ah. RCS heaters. Okay, let's just go over to the pilot's panel. Alright. Horizon scanner heater. Computer mode. Let's go to the center pedestal. And pre-LN. And computer power off. And I just platform off. And rate gyros off. And AC power source off. Yep. Okay, fuses open. 
for the RCS. Controller power RCS. Oh, where were you? There you are. Ah, head. Okay. Take a look at the altitude gauge when it displays 500 feet from ground. Well, anyway, we're still doing stuff. Uh, that's overhead. Toggle D ring safe. I still don't understand the D ring. <laughs> they never, they never mentioned that. Toggle D ring. When it displays 500 feet from the ground, um, we're there. A center pedestal, press landing at. Um, we we did that. Now let's see the external. There we are. There's the carrier. We could do the snorkel. They didn't tell us to do the snorkel. Okay, preparing for splashdown. 50 meters. I guess it's safe. Okay, completed mission. Hey, they actually checked Mart completed mission this time. Okay. Fine. Is exit session. Boy, that was a lot. Um, tell you what, uh, instead of, because we're going to end up doing that again in the full mission. Instead of doing that again immediately, let me jump to the lesson 10 maneuvering in burns and then maybe in the next video do the full mission. Otherwise we'll end up just doing that again. And I don't want to repeat myself in the same video like that. Okay, welcome to the maneuvering session. Gemini has the capability to alter its current orbital trajectory. To do this, the RCS thrusters are used to translate the craft in any direction. Well, maybe in this case we should talk about the Ohm's thrusters, right? Because the RCS is only for entry. Executing burns uh, is a semi-manual process. The OBC will first need to be configured with the burn vector known as delta v or delta velocity, the change you wish to append to your current uh -oh, spelling velocity. In addition, the computer will need to know when the change in velocity will take place. All OBC slash RCS burns are done in the catch-up module, a program in the OBC specially designed to execute burns. Set the computer mode to catch up. Okay, catch up, catch up. Anyway, aux tape system will now be used to load the catch up module to into the OBC memory. It takes 10 minutes enough time to let us walk through the pads. Let us request a burn. This can be done either uh, by the mission ground or through a radio request. Okay, uh, let me just go to the lower position here. Okay. Uh, mission tools, mission tools, window. Okay, uh, where you can perform various actions related to the mission, find some tools and request burns. Uh, press ground, request burns. Whoa. Okay, yeah. <laughs> This could be formatted a little bit differently, but uh, do not press any of them yet. Once you do, you will receive a couple of messages from ground containing burn information and a pad, data about the burn. Hit Roger on both of those messages when you see receive them. Go ahead and press maneuver, uh, circu circulate, cir maneuver circulate? Circularize at PE and close the mission tools window. Okay, request PE circularization burn, I think. Okay. Roger, DCS. So we've got that, and it said to Roger all that with the pad. You sure you don't want me to note that? Um, calculate burn. Uh, okay, that will circularize the orbit at perigee, the lowest point in your current orbit. Roger to both of them. We'll look at the data later. Okay. Let us use the transcript in the mission pad. Okay, so that we can close, hopefully. Transcript, and we've got the stuff here. Okay, find the two messages containing the burn data. Okay, so we are going over to the pilot seat. 
Okay, set that up. Nope. Set that up. There we go. The first message is a summary of the burn that has been uplinked through DCS. Each time you receive a DCS message, data uplinked from the ground, DCS light will illuminate. I guess that's that one. Press the DCS button to reset the light. Or maybe it's not that one. Or, uh, oh, this is the button. Oh, this is the button. Okay. Reset the light. Reset the light. The next message is the pad data, preliminary advisory data, and is basically all the information you need related to the burn. Does the message seem intimidating? Not really, I've been through this before. Uh, Apollo. So, once you understand it, it'll be easy to read. To catch, uh, to understand the message, let's open up the pad form for the catch up burn module, uh, burn maneuver. Once again, uh, open up mission tools, window again. Uh, press data forms, uh, maneuver pad. Oh god, it's behind the thing. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've seen plenty of these forms before. Okay. You used to type down the data in the pad you received from the ground. Okay, we did that. Resize the pad window. I can make it really wide. <laughs> Press the brush to start drawing. P30 maneuver. That's very Apollo. Press the brush icon on the top. Uh, this will disable the resizing tool but enable drawing. Yeah, okay. Using the left button. You can draw on the sheet. Uh, various tools that are available in the toolbar stands for numerics. Uh, pen eraser tool is available through the scroll wheel. Um, okay. Oh gosh. Scroll wheel eraser. See, we have erased. Pluses, minuses, zero. Okay, we can put little num. Uh, okay. Numbers, and then eraser. Okay. Let's start with zero. Type in the data from the pad. This can be done on paper or outside, or on the pad outside the sim instead. Yeah, probably better that way. But um, the first data points on the pad is the burn row and contains two rows. Uh, type in PE circ on the first row. Well, PE <laughs> uh, circ. Okay, forgive the horrible handwriting with the mouse. RCS RCS oh, why, why don't we say ohms anyway? Whatever. Okay, next. Okay. Description of the burn type. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Um, okay. The uh, ground elapsed time for ignition also containing two rows. Yes. There's a special format. If the data shows 00111, tells you the ignition should happen at 1 hour 11 minutes into the mission. So, yes, type this into the sheet. Well, let's see. Uh, uh oh. Uh, okay, there we are. Okay, 00111 it is. Okay, so. Boop, boop. Zero, zero. Well, that's easy to do with this. We'll use their handwriting. Okay. Time of ignition and contain oh uh, the duration of uh, the I think it means duration of the ignition seconds and milliseconds it also has five digits where the first digit is always a zero the next two digits is seconds and the last two is milliseconds type it into the sheet 
Okay, so... Two... Four... One... Zero... Okay. If the data point was 2388, it means you can read it as 23.88 seconds. The two uh, ground elapsed time ignition fields uh, tell you the exact time of ignition. The uh, OBC will need to know this data. Okay, then delta V in local vertical at time of ignition. X axis is forwards and backwards, Y left and right, and Z up and down. Most burns will only contain data in the x-axis. Since this is the PE circularization burn, the x is, delta x is negative, retrograde direction. This is indicated with a 9 at the beginning of the data point. Okay. Um, since the OBC does not have a plus or minus button. Type this into the pad. You'll notice that uh, the last digits Digit of the five digits is a decimal, so the format is xxxx.x, .x, where the first x can be a 9 or a 0. 65.7 feet per second in the x-axis, a retrograde burn. If it was an AP circularization burn, it would be positive. So it would be 65.7 plus. Okay, got that. We've got a negative on the z-axis for some reason, even though there's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. But, uh, well, I mean, for completeness sake. Okay, so BT row is the burn time. Okay, that's the burn time. I wonder what that OSS one is. Might have... Oh, well, I mean, that's just the seconds. Yeah. Okay, burn time. All right. Attitude section can be skipped for now, but it is the direction of the burn vector on your current inertial platform. Well, it says NA, NA, NA. Well, all right, fine. Next two entries in the pad is HA and HP, the predicted altitude of the resulting orbit you're about to burn into if the DV is applied at GETI. The unit is nautical miles and the altitude above the surface of the Earth your new AP and PE basically, except the computer will return to us the altitude above the center of the Earth rather than the surface, which is great. And I think it does it in kilometers, I forget. I don't think it's in nautical miles. Anyway, that's it for the basics of the pad. Anytime you receive a pad, uh, just follow the order of the data in the message and type, it, uh, type them down in the correct sheet in the same order. Data can be inserted into the OBC. It is done automatically using the DCS uplink from the ground, but you should always verify the data. Look at the right side of the pad, and uh, I guess we don't have to keep that open. We'll keep the pad. Okay, mm you'll see numbers 1 and 2. This is the core where the data should be inserted. Oh, so the numbers uh, on the side there tell us what the... That's candy. Okay, so... Let's just go to the pilot seat. We're bound to need it. Okay. So, zero, 01 and readout. Yes, it's zero, zero, 00111. Yes, it should be correct. Okay. Yeah, I got that. You might have noticed that all the values that should be inserted into the OBC is in the correct format in the pad, five digits, and the zero or nine for positive and negative values. This makes it easy to plot and uh, plan burn into the computer. Let's verify the next data point. Hit clear and go zero two. Okay. And yes, that is what I expected. Check core 25. Okay, 9. Uh, it did 656 when it was supposed to be 657. <laughs> I guess maybe it's rounding. Um, 
Pipe it in if it does not match. Okay, well, it doesn't match. Zero, six, five, seven. Enter. So there. Okay, well, the others are zero, so. That is, in fact, zero. And I actually didn't have the 9 on it, but we'll just take that. The OVC is now configured for the burn. You can close the catch-up maneuver pad if you wish. You can always bring it up with the mission tools menu. Okay, once we have inserted the burn data, the burn can be calculated by pressing start. Um, catch up, yeah, platform, all right, start. Okay, OBC will now calculate the burn and display the burn vectors into the IVI. The first uh, key 83 readout on the MDU that will show you the countdown to the burn. Okay, clear, 83, and readout. Okay, A2, uh, that's minutes and seconds. So, that's minutes and seconds. Previously we had seen for the re-entry that that was just going to be seconds. But for burns it's minutes and seconds? Great. <laughs> the first three digits is a total minutes to the burn, and the last two is seconds. Vent timer to 10 minutes. Okay, and we want it counting down ultimately. Monitor the mission timer in the center panel. Burn should happen when it is equal to the GETI on the pad. Oh, where the heck? Okay. 24, 21. What was the GETI anyway? 111, right? There's 10 minutes left to ignition. Start the event timer. So basically, you want one hour, one minute. And. How many seconds? 24 seconds. One hour, one minute, and 24 seconds we started. Okay, well, let me sidle over there and do a readout. 10 minutes, 25 seconds. Okay. Alright, probably a second off, but it's fine. Enable ohms and try BF, SEF. Manual controls. Uh, do, I, do I have to try everything again? Okay. Mm, ohms. Ohms on. Pay attention to the IVIs. Well, we want to be retro. So, not SEF. Change your attitude, the IVIs will update and show you what directions to burn to zero the IVIs, yeah. Since the RCS translation can be done in any direction, your spacecraft can perform the delta V burn in any attitude, yeah. And the majority happens to be in one axis, typically you want to be BEF or SEF, yeah. The burn is delta X burn. Uh, most of the delta V can be done forward or aft thrusters. When the countdown reaches the ignition time, simply zero the IVIs and the burn will be complete. Hopefully, all I see there ends up being the forward and backward and not a whole bunch of other stuff. Something's happening though. I guess it's doing a lot to hold butt end forward. But yeah, I'm hoping the other two are zero. At the burn time. Well, we're only one minute off. Okay, now that's getting to zero. Okay, wasn't doing quite right yet. Okay, so that first number should match what we're supposed to do. Um, it was supposed to be 65.7, so yeah, all right. Okay. It should be a 32.85 second burn. 
I guess there's some extra in the other axes because of like our turning and such. We'll turn off that stuff. Okay, burning. No, wrong way. I'll deal with the other axes eventually. Apollo would have just, just done the burn automatically. Though, maybe that's not the best thing to do. <laughs> maybe it's better to do it manually. I've had problems with the Apollo computer every now and again. Okay, it's happy. Oh, come on. Let me just zero it out. Okay, we've zeroed it out. Yay. Hit the reset button on the computer to finalize the burn procedures. That's an interesting way to finalize it. It is important to not let the computer run or compute an old burn or the IVIs will go crazy. Okay. All of the burn procedures can be found in the mission pad, circularized orbit, and rendezvous checklists. Okay. So we did that one. Rather sophisticated. Apparently the goals were dock of Agena and slash down though, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand the goals section of that uh, mission debrief, but okay. Uh, maybe that's for a different thing. So yeah, speaking of Agena, there's probably there's free play this scenarios. There's the Agena docking and rendezvous burn training. That's training apparently. There's two other trainings here. Uh, there's this Gemini rendezvous and rendezvous burn training. Anyway, but we'll do that later. We'll just uh, focus on the Gemini, the full mission exam next time. For now, I will wrap it up. And this has been quite a lot of stuff already. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.